Okay, so in this video, we'll go over finding duplicates when you don't have a unique ID column to find your duplicates. We will start working with this little data set to make this entire thing clear. And then later on, we'll do the same using this more realistic, I guess, data set on the left. So let's see what the logic is going to be. Well, first of all, if you're just trying to delete any duplicate rows, then Excel has a feature for that. So uh, first of all, let's identify which ones are duplicates. So if I look at this one, see this, if the whole column matches another column, so for example, this one, see it's A first column, blank the second, B in the third column, and C in the fourth column. That would be a duplicate. So if we're trying to remove those duplicates, we can simply use remove duplicates feature in Excel. And we can do that by simply highlighting our data going under data tab and under data tab there is this feature remove duplicates so i'm going to click on that now in my data set if you remember when i selected i selected this whole thing and the first row was my column labels so i want to make sure this checkbox is checked my data has headers and then i want to make sure i'm checking for duplicates for all columns that i've selected combined so every column is checked that's good i'm going to hit ok and see two duplicate rows removed. And that's the way you can just get rid of duplicates. So I'm gonna undo this. So what if we want to identify duplicates but you don't want to actually remove it? In that case, you will need to create a column that will serve as a unique ID. So I'm gonna create a new column. I'll call it UID for unique ID. One common way that people do this is by joining all these columns together and getting one value out of that joined result. Now there is the correct way of doing it and there is the incorrect way of doing it. Now I see a lot of people doing this incorrect way, although technically I guess it works 99% of the time, probably in most data sets. So let me start by doing this the correct way. So I'm gonna start with an equal sign and then I'm going to use concatenate to join all these functions. Now you can use the function concatenate or ampersand operator, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use the function concatenate in this case. So I'm gonna use concatenate, I'm gonna take the first column, the value in this uh, A2 comma, and then I'm gonna use a separator character. And since this is my own text, it has to be in quotes. So quote, I'm gonna use a character like this, so the idea of this character and the character you should choose is something that is just not likely to be in your data set. So if you think you don't have any underscores anywhere in your data, then maybe use underscore as that separator, right? So try to use something that's not gonna be in your data. Comma, then the second column, then I'm gonna do another underscore, comma, and then the third column, and then another underscore, comma, and then we'll do the fourth column. So I'm basically joining these four columns together using underscores in between. I do this ending parentheses close, hit enter, and it basically joins CDA, then it did the underscore, then there was a blank, so we ended up with two underscores side by side. So I drag this down and that creates my unique ID column. Now let me show you the way people do this that's incorrect. So I use the same concatenate. I take this, comma this, comma this, comma this, which is a lot easier to do, right? I'm gonna hit enter and drag this down. Let's take a look. So if you remember, this is our first row and the next row that was a duplicate for this was this one. Now looking at this result, see the unique ID that we've created using this second method, it shows like this is the same as this, it's the same as this. So we also think that this is the same as this, although it isn't. But because we have this possible blanks, this A is not in the same column, it's not the same thing, but it may feel like it's the same thing because of this. And this is the reason why we want to use a separating character. So you can see that same problem here in the end. Now, if I look here, see, it joins this and it looks like 
it's just ER, ER, it looks the same, but it's not. So you could also end up with these cases when you had something like this, right? So it's not the same, but it will feel like it's the same using this way of creating a unique column. So now we can use this column to highlight our duplicates. So there are a few different ways to do this. So you can use conditional formatting by simply highlighting this, going under home, conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, duplicate values, and choose your whatever color you want to use. And that should just highlight your duplicate rows in your data set. Now, obviously this is where this would not be accurate because of the reasons I just mentioned, right? But we're not gonna be using this anyway, so I'm gonna delete that. So now that this is done, you could just apply a filter on this, under data filter, and I can go here and filter by color and choose everything that's in that color and this should just select the rows that are duplicate and you can now decide how you're gonna deal with this. I'm gonna clear that. Another way if you don't want to filter by color you can use count ifs function and you can just select this criteria range. I'm gonna select this column E, F4 just to lock it for good practice, comma, and then this row as a criteria. So it's gonna count how many of this it's able to find here. So if I drag this down, anything that's greater than one, it tells you it's a duplicate. So we're able to find two of these, two of these, two of these, one of this. If you have three of something, you're gonna get a three. It gives you the count of how many of that particular thing you were able to find. And you can use this column to scroll to your duplicates and do something about it. Another reason this might be useful is because you might want to highlight the entire row to show that entire row is a duplicate instead of just highlighting the cell. And with this count ifs function that gives us the count, we can do a conditional test and we can say, is that greater than one? And that tells us if it says true, that has another row that's a duplicate. So it gives us true and false. So now because this is a true and false formula, I can take that and use that in my conditional formatting. So to make sure this works for the whole row, I'm gonna make sure I lock all the columns, dollar sign for E as well. So dollar sign here, dollar sign for this E and dollar sign for this E. All the columns are locked. I'm gonna take that formula. Now I'm gonna just copy that entire first formula on top. I'm gonna hit escape. And then I'm gonna select my data starting from the same row here where I copied my formula. So from here, from the second row, I select going down under home, I go under conditional formatting and then new rule. And then the last option here is use a formula to determine which cells to format. And I'm gonna paste my formula here and then I'm gonna choose some sort of format. So format, fill would be the background color choose some color, hit okay, there we have it. I don't really have to keep this count ifs on the side. That was just for us to figure out how we're gonna do this, but that's all our duplicate rows highlighted. I'm gonna now undo a few steps. And what I want to show you now is how to just highlight the extra duplicate rows, because as of right now, when we have this row the same as this row, we just highlight both of them. Now what I want to do, I don't want to highlight the first one, I want to highlight the second, the third, or any other duplicate going forward. So first of all, let me just create another one of these duplicates here. So we have three, not just two. So to do this, I'm gonna go here after we create this unique ID column and use my count ifs function again. And I'm gonna use this in a little different way. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to highlight a range like this from E2 to E3. And then I'm going to actually change that from E2 through E2. So it's a range of just one cell. And I'm just gonna check in that range if that equals to this. So I want to count how many of that I can find in this range. 
which is in that cell. So we should get one. There is only one of that in that cell. So just to show you, that's one. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go here and I'm going to lock this row two on top. So I'm going to add a dollar sign for this first row two, but not for the second one in this range, just for the first one. I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to drag it down. So what's going to happen is that now, see, although this has a duplicate, we are going to get count of one because at this point, the range doesn't have all the rest selected. But later on, as we start scrolling down, the range expands. And then when we get to this one, which is actually a duplicate of that on top, see, it includes the range. So it gives us a two. And then we get a three, so that's another duplicate. So basically any number that's above one is a duplicate. So now we can just go here and convert this to a logical test. We can say, is that greater than one? And then it says false because it's the first occurrence, so it shouldn't be highlighted. I drag it down, see I get a true for this and true for this and true for this. Those are the ones that need to be highlighted. So now I'm gonna go back here and I'm going to like before, make sure I lock all the columns like that. So now that all the columns are locked, I'm going to copy that whole formula, hit escape. So again, I have to start highlighting from the same row where I copied my formula here on the right, then conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula, and I'm going to paste my formula, format, choose some field background color, And there we have it. Now we're just highlighting the extra duplicate rows instead of just duplicates in general. So now let me quickly do this on our data set. I'm gonna go to this tab. So the more columns you have, the more difficult it's gonna get. So I'm gonna go here and I'm going to first create my unique ID column and it's gonna be equal to, so I'll start with concatenate again, this comma, I'll use an underscore, comma, this, comma, another underscore, comma, this, comma, another underscore. So if you have a lot of this, you might want to just copy this quote underscore quote and paste it because you may have to do that a lot. But for right now, I only have four columns. I can manage this. So there it is. So every column with an underscore in the middle, I'm gonna hit enter. It's going to create a long column there. That's okay. I'm going to drag it down to create a unique ID column. So now that I have this column, now I'm going to create that count ifs function. So to do that, I'm going to use my count ifs and I'm going to use the range. I usually going to highlight this too because that's easier than to just clear and make a range. Obviously, you can just type e2 colon e2, same thing comma, and then I'm going to check for E2 in that range. And I need to lock the first row number two. And then also because I'm going to use this for conditional formatting, all the columns lock them with a the dollar sign, right? So basically everything is locked with the exception of this row two for the end of the range and this row two for the criteria. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to double click. So the top one, see, it's going to keep going until we find one that has another occurrence. There it is. And then we're going to take that formula and say, is that greater than one? And if it is, we're going to know that's an extra duplicate row. So now you'll take that formula, the entire thing, copy it. I'm going to go to the same row here, control shift right. And I'm gonna do shift left because I'm planning to delete this column F and control shift down and then conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula, paste my formula, format and choose some format. And now I should have all the extra duplicate rows highlighted using this method. And then I can obviously just delete this and keep my user ID column there. So this user IDs can get very long and it's kind of not great looking, but you kind of have to deal with it. If you really, really can't stand it, maybe just hide that column.
And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.